Hey everybody, Tim Rickman here and welcome to video two in my series on box pleating. In the first video I showed you how to create this very basic origami feature. In this video we'll be combining several of these features in one crease pattern. We'll learn how to make a 16 by 16 grid and also learn how to do some basic shaping techniques. Box pleating is a style of origami design which uses horizontal, vertical, and diagonal creases. The horizontal and vertical creases are spaced evenly across the paper in a grid. The intersections of these grid lines are used as reference points to place the diagonal creases. Let's begin by pre-folding an 8x8 grid of alternating mountain and valley creases. Another way to say that is that we're going to fan fold the paper. Bring the bottom raw edge to the top and make a crease along the middle of the paper. Rotate the paper and bring the edge of the top layer to the folded edge and make a crease. Turn the model over and repeat on the other side. Unfold the model so that the central crease is a valley fold. Rotate the paper 90 degrees and repeat these steps of the first set of creases. Now we have the paper with a 4x4 four four grid of alternating mountain and valley creases. The sequence should be the same in both directions, mountain, valley, mountain. This is the underlying grid of our basic feature, but we want room to add more features, so now we'll bisect each of these panels. Turn the paper over and fold the top flap down. Bring the raw edge to the folded edge and make a crease. Reverse fold the next crease and bring the folded edges together and crease. Repeat this down the length of the paper. It may be easier to rotate the paper around to do this last pleat. Unfold the paper, rotate, and repeat bisecting the panels going the other direction. The paper is now creased with an 8 by 8 grid of alternating mountain and valley folds. Place the paper so that the central, vertical, and horizontal creases are both valley folds. Now take a look at the crease pattern for the simple feature we made in the first video. I've scaled down the CP to match the size of the boxes in our new grid. I've also used red marker to indicate mountain folds and blue to indicate valleys. 
Copy the crease pattern for this simple feature in the very center of our paper with pencil. Mark the boundary of this feature as well. We will now surround the crease pattern of this feature with copies of the crease pattern. The perimeter of the paper doesn't leave enough room to draw a complete copy of the pattern, but that's okay. As long as the point that becomes the very end of the feature is anywhere on the paper, the flap will be as long as the distance from that point to the nearest edge of the boundary. In order to be able to collapse the model, all mountain and valley creases must line up along the boundary of a feature like puzzle pieces. Remember also that the center of the feature needs to be at the intersection of two valley folds. Using these rules, there are multiple places the crease pattern for the next feature could go. Alongside the first, two spaces up, in the corner, and any similar position around the edge. Place the first one next to the middle. Notice how all the mountain and valley creases align. Go ahead and pencil in the diagonal creases for this feature. Make sure to aim through the intersections of the horizontal and vertical creases. Go ahead and pencil in the boundary for this feature as well. Place the next one in the corner. and continue placing them around the central element just like this. Now that we have the diagonal creases penciled in, we need to pre-crease them. It's best to pre-crease the diagonal creases as mountain folds because that's how they begin.
Now that the paper is pre-folded, there are a few different ways we can collapse the model. One method that will work well is to start with just the row of features along the middle. Fold the paper in half and begin collapsing these features a little bit at a time. Ignore the other features for now. Just extend these creases to the edge using your grid. Now that we have these formed, open up the paper slightly and collapse the other features. The paper is now collapsed into a base that has nine flaps, each two units long. Up until now, I've been calling these flaps and this a feature. However, a flap is any part of the model that can be distinguished from the rest of the model by a hinge. A feature is kind of a generic term I might use to describe any particular part of the model. A layer is one thickness of the paper. If you fold the paper in half and push the pen through it, the pen would go through two layers. You can see that the top flap is the same as our basic feature, but now it has others attached. The base of each flap, where it hinges to the rest of the model, is also its boundary in the CP. Mountain and valley folds along the feature's boundary in the CP indicate that flap's orientation when the model is collapsed into a base. The flaps along the edge that took up less paper are less bulky and have less layers in them. When designing, long features like insect legs are often placed on the edge for this quality. Flaps in the middle have more paper and can be used for features that need more volume. This base with its one main flap and eight other flaps below resembles an octopus to me. Let's try to change this base to make it look more like an octopus. You can either unfold and use this model or refold another 8x8 grid. We're going to use the same arrangement of diagonal creases but on a 16x16 16 16 box grid. Continue to bisect all of the horizontal and vertical panels.
make sure all the outermost creases are mountain folds. The pencil marks you made before will now be on the other side of the paper. Go ahead and redraw them on this side using the same set of diagonal creases we had before. We have the same arrangement of diagonal creases, only each feature has an 8x8 eight eight grid now. This means that they'll be thinned down, making them longer in relation to the width of their base. Recollapse the model now using the same method we used before. We now have a base that has the same number of flaps as before, but each flap is thinner. I will now show you some shaping techniques so we can make this base look like an octopus. These flaps will become the tentacles. They are already thin, but we can thin them down more. To start, locate this area of the paper between each of the flaps. Right now, they all angle up. Take each one and fold them all down. This creates new diagonal creases underneath. Now, bisect this angle by pushing the folded edge up to meet the neutral crease above.
With the edge flaps, we can flatten them out and curl the paper underneath through the layers. The crease begins halfway from the center to the edge, but curves to the corner of the hinge. Repeat this on the other side. and on all of the others that came from the side of the crease pattern. With the corner flaps, we can flatten them out along the diagonal, creating new creases. Keep the layers behind together by holding them on your finger like this. Now separate the paper on either side of the diagonal and squash the paper down. This will create new creases. Now we can fold the edges down and thin these flaps down like we did on the flaps that came from the side of the model. Do this on all the other corner flaps as well.
Now that we have thinned down the legs, we can expand the head like this. Now take each of the legs and fold them in half like a taco and roll the paper under even more. legs like this to give them a rounded appearance. And do this with all of the legs. I'm going to skip ahead now, but go ahead and shape all of the other six legs like the two we did right here. Now that we have the legs thinned down, it should start to look like this. And we can shape the head a little bit more now. So if you reach inside underneath the bottle, you can kind of push some of the paper out here to shape the back of the head. Kind of like that. And then on the front, you can use these same kind of creases here. And if you just change them slightly, by curving them a little bit, you can kind of start to make it look like eyes. Like that. So we'll spread these apart, kind of alter this crease here by squashing it down a little bit. And then sort of round off the top like that and then bring the paper together underneath it like that to make it kind of look like, kind of look like eyes there. And then the back of the head kind of comes out like that. Now we can articulate the tentacles in a way that makes the octopus like, look like it has life to it. It's important not to overshape the model, but use just enough technique to give it movement. It takes practice and patience to shape a model well, but the results can be very nice. As you work on these Pay attention to the paper and try not to put too much pressure on them. Paper like this can become brittle through the folding process and it might split along a crease. It's okay if the paper rips a little. If we were to purposefully cut the paper, then it's not truly origami, but a tiny tear in the paper that isn't integral to the design of the model is unfortunate, but it's still origami. In general, CPs only describe the creases needed to collapse the paper into a base. Shaping elements like this are not included in the CP. They involve folding through multiple layers of the paper and altering some of the creases of the base CP. The shaping of the model will look different with each folding of the model. 
Usually a picture of the finished model will help you understand the designer's intended shaping. And now we have our first box pleated design, an octopus. As an added challenge, I challenge you guys to fold this. Uh, this was the model that we folded in this video. And this is the same model, but it's set on a higher number box grid. So this was the base for the model we folded here. And it is on a 16 by 16 box grid. But if we divide each of those panels in half one more time, we get a 32 by 32 box grid, meaning that all of our flaps are going to be thinned down even more. And this will allow us to add just a little bit more detail to the model. You can see here uh, we have a brow line as well as the pupils here. We were able to thin down the tentacles even more and the uh, area where they come together kind of cinches together a little bit more. In general, <clears throat> a higher number box grid allows you to uh, put more detail into the model and it's something that I refer to as the resolution of the model. A higher number of boxes allow you to put more details into that design. So if you are ready for a, a bigger challenge, uh, I, I challenge you to uh, try to fold this same model with the same arrangement of diagonal creases only on a 32 by 32 box grid. So that's it for this, uh, this video. Uh, we learned how to place multiple features on one crease pattern. We also made a 16 by 16 grid and took a look at some basic shaping techniques. In uh, the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create crease patterns for different kind of features. Uh, features that have multiple points with one stem. Um, things like that. And then uh, in future videos we'll talk about uh, 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 different angles you can use other than these here. Um, and uh, Color change and uh, the differences between box pleating and uh, radial uh, circle packing, things like that. We've got a lot of topics that I still want to go over so this series isn't over yet. Uh, I don't know how long it'll take me to get the next video out but stay tuned and uh, you, you'll see more videos in this box pleating series from me soon. Uh, so that's it for this episode. Don't forget to leave a constructive comment below. Let me, guys, let me know what you guys think of this series. And if you have any questions that I might answer in a future episode, something that you want me to cover, uh, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. All right, everybody, thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.